No, I was uh, looking at <clears throat> Double Toasted recently, and they were doing a review on episode four. Um, episode one and two it aired of Obi Wan Kenobi, and it was clear why they aired episode one and two back to back when they usually do episode one late a week, episode two late a week. They did the same thing with One Division. Captain America went, sorry, Falcon with Soldier, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Mandalorian, Book of Boba Fett. They did episode one and two back to back. That should that should have been a red flag right there. When they're giving you two episodes back to back, uh, Disney's also doing this now. Uh, episode one only, not episode two, with uh, the recently released Ms. Marvel. And episode one was really great. There's some cool things in there. So overall, it's a really good experience. So because they know episode one was really good. But for some reason, with Obi-Wan Kenobi, they released episodes one and episode two. They never do that because they wanted the, epi they wanted the episode uh, to end with like a good cliffhanger, a really good, like uh, OMG moment, per se. So I was like, all right, you know, um, I, I see what you're doing, Disney. I think most people do are seeing what you're doing. So I was like, okay, this is not going to be the greatest show. I thought so by the trailer, honestly. And then I was like, all right, let's... Um, Hopefully this can get better. Uh, episode three came along with Obi Wan and Vader came in there, sort of killing kids and killing parents and stuff, stuff like that. There, uh, really good dramatic moments, and that was very well done. So I was like, okay, this this could be interesting. And then uh, the episode ended with um, uh, Reba chasing, uh, you know, killing the 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 person that uh, Leia was supposed to meet. And then uh, that's that. They didn't explain how she got ahead of Leia and, to the point and killed that guy. I didn't think they would. See, that that was that was a sign of things to come. A sign of bad writing from things to come. When I saw Book of Boba Fett, there was only, out of the whole thing, there was only one time I thought to myself here, that's kind of bullshit. But it wasn't complete bullshit, and I'll explain in a little bit. In Obi-Wan Kenobi, uh, not only did they have Reba magically jump ahead of Leia when she was in that tunnel, that very thin, very narrow tunnel, um, I got that Reba could understand the Jedi, uh, the Jedi language because she's like a, a Jedi kind of herself. I get that part. I don't think anybody has a problem with that one. But I think everybody has a problem with, like, how did she, like, like teleport, if you will, in front of Leia and kill that guy? They never explained that part. Um, if they explain it in the next episode, not right away. You don't have to do that kind of stuff right away. If they explain it right away, uh, that'd be like, um, okay. But if you explain it later on there, okay, cool. Now we understand we know what you're doing. But they never did. Uh, that was the same issue in Book of Boba Fett when Black Santon, uh snuck into the palace and was beating up Boba Fett when he was in the, the Bacta tank. These are words I never said before out loud in my life, by the way, so I, I apologize. So he snuck into the palace, beat him up, and the Power Ranger kids there came in there and did their thing, and he wiped them off. So um, the only problem, of course, is like, how did he get in there? The issue that was kind of rectified per se was the very next episode when boba had to get his ship back and uh finnick shen said we can go through there and sneak inside from there that made me think that black Santin found a small little gap in there and i found a path in the, the palace that no one else could like was was guarding or whatever I'm like, okay, maybe he did that the way that they're doing that. Because in that episode, he was getting his ship back, uh, the slave one or whatever, whatever they call it now. Um, they, so, so they, they, uh, so the whole place is crawling with guards, except for that one particular spot. The whole place is crawling with guards. So, um, maybe he did the same thing and got inside there. That's, that's a maybe. They never explained it completely, but at least next, next episode, they were doing a, a sneak in mission while, Bar while Cassant didn't have a sneak in mission. So at least kind of there was that. Now we go back to Obi Wan Kenobi. I doubt they, they I doubt they explained this shit. So there were several moments in the episode I was thinking like, what the hell is this shit? Episodes uh, two and episode three were pretty cool. Um, of course, with like a Leia being sassy and obviously using the Force to save her. 
The other issue with uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi is that we know the stakes are very low because we know this is a, um, a prequel kind of thing uh, where Obi-Wan has to make it to the future, Leia has to make it to the future, so the stakes of them dying are null. There's no way at all they're going to die. So, but but the makers of the show put Leia in danger, Put they put Obi-Wan Kenobi in danger, so... I guess that's the thing. So, like, they have the little moments in there. Um, but I, I was rolling my eyes in episode, uh, I think, three it was, in which uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, was give away her name in front of the stormtroopers, saying, like, no, like, 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 calm down, Leia. I'm like, and then everyone in the truck was, like, like slapping their forehead like they were the naked gun uh, part three. I'm like, pop, pop, pop. I was like, oh, my God. So, um... That was uh, something right there. They never explained that, like, uh, you would expect, like, Leia to say something about how stupid Kenobi was, but they never did. So, um, episode four, uh, the cringe dialogue with Reba and Leia in the interrogation room, that was pretty, pretty poorly handled. I mean, like, interrogation scenes are really difficult to film in the first place. But they did this one a really disservice there by having the usual typical angles and, and the typical dialogue back and forth between two alpha females per se there. I don't know. You know. Oh, yes, you do. I don't know. Yes, you do. I don't know. Yes, you do. So I was like, oh, my God. Uh, what's well, going to be over? And it was slowly done. And I was like thinking, like, who's going to win the cat and mouse game here? We know Leia can't die. Reba, she could die because she's a new character. I don't know what they're going to do with her. So, um... That was number one cringe. Uh, number two was, uh, let me see here. I can pick many in this one. Uh, the officer believing what's her face there with the credentials. I guess that can happen, but more, uh, but more likely than not there, that guy would check with the, the main, the main guy, Darth Vader, to see whether or not she's telling the truth or not there. He just believed it. I was like, okay, whatever there. Um, in the tunnel path, when they were running away from the stormtroopers, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi held the entire thing up, the crack in the window with the Force. I, I believe that one. I think most of us can believe that because, like, the Force can do some mysterious things, like holding things together, crushing things, pushing back, that kind of stuff there. Why not hold up the pressure of the the, the tank to hold the stuff together? I, I, I didn't have a problem with that one. The issue was... When they're running in the tunnel and the water was running behind him, he outran the water completely. I'm like, I don't believe that for a second. And number and the other part was like there when the water went up against the 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 door, the the, the double sideways doors. Not a splash of water like went in the room. Not a single droplet. Not a leak. Nothing, as if that room was airtight. Nothing went in that room. I'm like, okay, whatever. There. Uh, the other the other issue was when Obi Wan Kenobi was escorting uh, Leia in that big ass coat through the whole facility. There, there's a certain dress code that they have there, and he was definitely not in the dress code. So, like, even though he wore green, he had no medallions. He had nothing to signify that he's part of the Empire. That was really weird. Um, they just all believed that there, she was peeking out of the, the, the coat or whatever. I'm like, oh my God, they're all shaven completely. He has a beard. I'm like, this is, this is weird shit. So that was another thing that was like seeing like, okay, they just naturally believe that he's like that one. I'm like, I know the empire, whatever is stupid, but they're not that stupid. Um, so I just moved on from that moment. Uh, and the coup de gras, I guess, of this whole situation was when uh, the, the typical, atypical, very American, cliche, overused, whatever you want to call it, uh, overdone, over, you know, was when um, Reba and the Stormtroopers and the entire Empire had Leia, the, uh, the Double Crosser, and Obi-Wan Kenobi. There's like 80 of them, per se, and they're about ready to fire. I'm rolling my eyes thinking like, okay, who's going to save them now? Because Leia can't die, he can't die. Who's going to save them? Three, two, one, and yeah, 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 they got saved. Okay, like, okay, come on, really. They can't die. It's typical, like, like ambush things. Someone's going to save them. So who's it going to be? It was so nobody's that nobody really cared about. So, 
So, like, episode four was, like, the worst written show of the whole thing. I believe when I saw the credits there, I didn't see, like, the typical people that did this thing. Whoever did this thing, don't ever do it again. Don't ever do it again. It, so, it wasn't, like, necessarily the directing of the show. It was the writing of the show. It was the, the timing, the writing, what they were saying, what they were doing. That was bad. The directing, like I said, it, it could have been worse, but the writing was really horrible. Whoever, whoever write. Uh, okay, in case you don't know the writing of shows, I was a writer in school. The writing of the show is done, and the director decides whether not to include it in your in your episodes. Then they change things around. So shows have co writers as well. They can have like I've seen shows with five co writers at once, but usually there's usually the good ones have one or two writers because they can work and and have a, a clear a clear focus on what that has, has to be done. So in this one. Um, the writing was horrible because they set up the place correctly and they made the moments bad as well. So they wrote, so they wrote Obi-Wan the hallway to not have a trouble, outrun the water. They wrote that the, the, the sliding doors close and not a drip, drop of water go in there. I don't think even like a hint of a, like, a, like the water bouncing against the door happened. They wrote that Obi-Wan goes through the tunnel and nobody recognizes him. They wrote, you know, you, you get the fucking point, man. They wrote all that stuff there. Director is like how you, what you feel, what, what, no, sorry, what you, what you see and what you hear. The writers are like the moments. That was a bad writer. In Book of Boba Fett there, uh, only the, the Crescenton thing was an issue, but they kind of rectified that slightly in the next episode. Everything else was like, like you, you can feel the good moments coming in there. Like when uh, he was at a table with the other crime lords or whatever, and uh, the Rancor came out, that was really cool. Um, and then Mando took over in episode four and five, that was cool as well. We got some some backup there, uh, but it was it was it was it was written really well. I mean, like I, I liked how uh, Ahsoka didn't really think it was a good idea for Mando to see Grogu. That was really good as well. Um, uh, Luke's face was changed the course there; it looked really great there, and he had his issues with Grogu, things like that. And uh, the the big reveal at the end there, like we all knew Grogu was going to choose Mando in the end because, well, reasons. You know, season three, you know what I'm saying? Um, so um, so episodes, you know, uh, episodes, uh, more or less, the episodes were pretty pretty well done and, and structured well for the character. So in the book, book of Boba Fett, there, episode one, he was establishing who he was, uh, you know, as 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 the main guy. Episode two had the Power Rangers come in there. Uh, I think uh, the main thing was the Power Rangers in episode two, right? And then episode three was Black Crescenton, like wreck, uh, wrecking the place or whatever. And episode four, um, I think it was episode. I think episode three had the the Rancor come in there. Um, yeah, the Rancor was was given to him in the beginning after Black Crescenton was was wrecking the palace as a, as a gift. Uh, episode four, of course, was Mandalorian. Episode five was Mandalorian as, as well. This was, was a combination between the two. There was no real writing issues. When it came to the book of Boba Fett, compared to Obi Wan Kenobi, the fact that they put Obi Wan and Leia in dan like in mortal danger, mortal danger when we know they can't die, is bullshit. And book of Boba Fett, this is like more or less in the future per se, and he could die, he could get injured or whatever. That's the difference. You can you can put characters like that in danger and be like, okay, this is oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Finnick Shan, like similar thing. Like, that you can put them in danger, but in Obi Wan Kenobi, don't do that uh, because we all know they can't really die. Um, they can get messed up there, but they can't really die. Like I said, two more episodes left, uh, and more or less, yeah, this is like a filler episode of of, uh, of Obi Wan Kenobi. Episodes uh, one, two, and three of Book of Boba Fett are more important to the character and the, the story. Episode four and five was was catch up with Mandalorian. That way, they were going to do catch up in season three. So I, I got that point. Um, also in uh, Book of Boba Fett, um, like I said, with the Crescenton thing, uh, storming the palace. If they did explain how Crescenton got in the palace beforehand, the shock of him grabbing him out of the tank. And like rag, ragdolling him or whatever would have been for moot. They if they wanted to show Chrysanthemum uh, sneaking in, it had to be after that kind of thing. That so that the shock value had to be there. It was there for a reason there. They didn't show him before him doing that one. So if you're thinking like, oh my god, how did he sneak in there at that moment? They should have did it afterwards, but they didn't have time, I guess. But they kind of do because it was like a half hour long. But I understood why they do that one. But overall, Book of Boba Fett is a 
much better written show than Obi-Wan Kenobi is. But not like it's horrible. We'll see what happens in the future. That's it for now. Clack off.